Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another podcast. Now, just a heads up, this podcast is not reef related. It is actually a request that you guys had from the last week's live stream. I was talking a little bit about my trip to Vermont, kind of why I went for the closure and all the things that were associated with it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna kind of dive into that a little bit. Now, I just wanna start the video by saying that I'm not making this for any kind of sympathy or any kind of additional support or anything to push sales or anything like that. It's simply to share uh, my experience with you. And uh, you never know, maybe somebody who is listening to this is going through a similar situation and uh, you know, maybe this is what they need to kind of progress in their life, who knows? But anyway, either way, these are podcast videos. They're not always reef related. A lot of personal stuff, a lot of random stuff. And uh, yeah, so here's some personal stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, so let's go to start off with a little bit of background so the reasoning why I went to Vermont makes a little bit more sense. So I was born in southern Vermont, particularly Bennington, Vermont, and uh, I grew up in a kind of a low and not the greatest trailer park in southern Vermont. And uh, yeah, I was in some different foster homes, stuff like that. Either way, I grew up in Vermont and uh, I left as soon as I possibly could. Basically, I joined the military to get out of that, sa- out of that state and to do something with my life. And uh yeah. So anyways, I went back to Vermont last weekend, not this weekend, the weekend before. And I really went back there for a few different reasons. One was to find my dad, which I had a pretty good idea where he was, but he is currently uh, going through prostate cancer and he's at the point where he's refusing to go and uh, go to his appointments and get the surgery to remove it. He's more focused on drinking and basically killing himself off. So I wanted to go find him to kind of see him again and to also ask some uh, hard questions, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, so that was one of the reasons. The other reason was to go back and visit these places where I've had, you know, some good times, but the majority of the things were not that great. So I wanted to go there. I wanted to spend some time at these places and just kind of be with my thoughts and to kind of get some closure to the things that happened when I was a child. Now, again, uh, there are so many different things that have happened and you know, it'd take forever to dive into all of them. And that's what I'm doing in therapy. So we don't, <laughs> we don't need to necessarily do that here, but maybe someday I'll share all those things with you if you want to know. But um, basically I went back and I found my dad. Okay, I went to this busted hotel on the side of Route 7, and uh, he answers the door. The first thing he says to me is, what's up? I'm like, <laughs> you haven't seen me in how long? And all you have to say is, what's up? Uh, needless to say, he was already drinking, and it was 7 a.m. Um, I should have went earlier, I guess. Maybe I should have got there at 5. Who knows? Maybe he was still drunk from the night before. But either way, so... Uh, He comes out and we start talking and his buddy shows up. So I didn't really get to ask the questions that I wanted to ask. And uh, I told him I would see him the following day. So this was Saturday. I said, I will see you Sunday before I go back home. And uh, because I want to talk to you about a few things. So I spent a little bit of time with him. Didn't really get to say what I wanted to say. But either either way, it was time together. And uh, I moved on with the rest of my kind of quote unquote mission. So from there on, I went to... um, the trail park. I went to the place where I lived and I uh, parked the car, which by the way, I took the 370Z. This is my first long trip in that car and uh, it was actually really good. I, I put Axel in there and Arlo. So I had <laughs> a massive dog and this puppy in the, on the floor and they, they did really well. They weren't really stressed out and uh, you know, they, they did pretty good. It was a nice trip uh, given it, it is a bumpy sports car, but I still enjoyed the ride. It was, it was pretty decent. But either way, I went and parked the car, got out and walked around and I just, I spent like two hours there on a, on a Saturday morning and I just walked around and I basically let all the thoughts and the things that have happened while I was in that particular place just kind of flood in and process them. It was, it was pretty emotional. I won't lie to you. It was pretty emotional kind of dealing with certain things. But the point of it was to let those thoughts in and to process them. And then once I felt comfortable and I felt like I thought about what I need to think about and I felt good about it or at least better that's when I left and uh, it happened to take a a couple hours for that particular spot. And uh, yeah, I guess some of you guys are probably wondering why did I do this in the first place? And I probably should have started the video with that. But um, at this point in my life, you know, I got four kids. Uh, I have a successful business. This is the second business that I've started. The first one was with somebody else and it turned out very, very well. And I I left that. Um, But with this one, I started on my own and I, like I said, I got four kids to feed and there's been a lot of different changes in my life since last year. Um, I don't want to particularly get into them right now, but we can at some point. Um, but either way, a lot of things have changed and it's time to get closure 
my life. It's time to move on and try, time to break the chain. And I've already done a pretty good job of that, but it's just time to move on. Um, not let these thoughts and these feelings and these emotions from when I was a kid and the events that happened and the people that did the things, um, not let them continually continue to mess with my life now that I'm in my mid thirties. I mean, I'm 34. And uh, one of you guys actually said that, um, that you did a similar thing yourself, uh, in a comment section, I believe in the last video, but, um, from some of the research that I did, this is actually pretty common for people in their thirties. I guess it's just part of the maturity and maturing in the process of dealing with things. I mean, who knows, but, um, it seems to be a running theme, I guess, mid thirties kind of go back and relive some stuff. Right. But either way, off topic. Um, so I went back and I sat with myself and I sat with the thoughts and I sat with the emotions and I processed things. And um, I did that all day Saturday and I did it a little bit in the morning on Sunday. Now, um, going back to my dad, it's Sunday morning. I went ahead and sat down with him and I really wanted to ask some of the questions. Uh, my dad is a full-fledged alcoholic. Um, one of the questions I asked my dad was, uh, why were you not around? And I know it's a pretty difficult question to ask your father, but I really wanted to know, like, why weren't you around when we were kids? I mean, I have a younger brother three years younger than me, and, you know, we were left, you know, you know, to hang out to dry. I mean, my mom suffered the whole time, and, you know, she's no sane herself. I still have a conversation I need to have with her. So, by the way, Mom, if you're watching this video, we're probably going to have that conversation next time I see you. So, there you go. <laughs> but uh, I do I do have a lot of questions for her as well. I just didn't have the opportunity to ask this uh, this time I went up. But um, so I asked him, I go, why were you not around? And he said that uh, him and my mom didn't see eye to eye. And I was like, okay, well, that's an answer. But what do you mean? And uh, he told me that he used to have us every other weekend after they split up. But she wouldn't let... Uh, my brother and I spent time with him if he was drinking. So then I put two and two together and I said, so you decided to choose the drink over spend time with your kids. And then he got quiet and then he got upset, uh, started to cry. And it was like, yeah, I chose the alcohol. And then I, and I was like, okay, so I wasn't upset or really emotional. I'm kind of, I wouldn't say numb at this point, but I kind of took that information. And I appreciated him stepping up and admitting that, um, it doesn't necessarily fix the problem, but it's good that he at least took responsibility for it. And then I asked him, okay, so tell me about your childhood. Tell me kind of, uh, you know, what happened? How long you been drinking for? You know, where did this start? And, and the reason why I asked this question was um, because I wanted to see where he came from. I wanted to see if it was something that was passed down to him. And sure enough, it was. Um, him and his father, when he was 13, were, you know, they would cut firewood for the house and his dad would give him wine and they would drink. And they would did that and that, that he spent time with his dad and the memories they had with his dad was drinking and cutting wood and doing those things. And uh, he told me that when he was 13, his dad told him that, hey, you're going to have to be the man of the house soon because I'm not going to be here much longer. And then sure enough, two weeks later, he ended up dying of a heart attack. And then my dad said that he just fell into alcohol at that point. He said he just drank to drink to drink. And I don't know if it was to numb the pain or to feel closer to his dad. I didn't really get into that with him. But then he continued to move, you know, as he grew up, he drank with his mom and then he just kept doing and doing, doing it. And then, you know, got his first DWI at uh, 17 years old, I believe. And he hasn't had his license since then. But uh, yeah, so the point was to kind of figure out where he was coming from. And the reason why um, I wanted to know that information was because it makes sense, you know, as a parent now, uh, one thing that I've noticed is, uh, sometimes when, when we are as parents are dealing with things and dealing with emotions and dealing with stressors, and we all are, I mean, that sometimes our pain and the things that we deal with is so great that we forget, um, that our pain, that we forget that other people have pain, like our kids, like they're suffering because of us. Um, not necessarily something that we're doing, but maybe that we're, uh, you know, hiding away or not communicating or angry for no reason or resentful or, you know, whatever emotion might be associated with it. But, um, you know, there was a movie I watched a while back and shout out to Scott for sending this to me. It's called The Shack. It's actually a pretty good movie. Um, it's more of a faith-based movie, so if you're not into that, you're probably not going to enjoy the movie. But if you are, check it out. I think it's on Amazon. But um, and in that movie, uh, it kind of it kind of hit home. I mean, I was already thinking about this stuff, but then it hit home. I was like, okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, the main character, you know, he ended up poisoning his father 
um, and killing him because, you know, he was beating him. He was mean to his mother and all this sorts of stuff, and he ended up poisoning him. But what, what was shown to him is that his father's father was horrible to him, and you could see how that was passed down from generation to generation. And, uh, and that was kind of bringing me back to why I wanted to know these things about my dad's dad and kind of figure out, you know, what's being passed down because there's a chain that needs to be broken. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy to say that I don't have an addiction to anything other than food. <laughs> and my therapist actually brought that up. He goes, on the grand scheme of things, to be addicted to a certain thing, I guess food is probably not the worst, but, you know, at the end it will kill you either way, uh, just like any other substance because, uh, um, you know, you eat yourself to death. But um, so because, you know, we've been diving into figuring out you know why I do the things I do. Why I, you know, I, den- I tend to binge eat and stuff. We can talk about that another time. But I tend to kind of uh, do those things to kind of cope with feelings and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it kind of brings me all back to wanting to know um, where it came from, where he came from, why he did the things he did. And it's the same thing for my mother. I mean, I have a lot of questions for her. I'm going to ask kind of the similar questions, kind of where you came from and uh, what happened. I mean, I know some things that have happened to her that were pretty bad, and uh, it makes sense on why she is the way she is. And um, you know, mom, if you're listening to this, it's nothing personal. <laughs> That's why we're not getting into it. But the reality is I, I'm aware of, you know, why my parents are the way they are. And um, I want to use that information so I don't so I don't end up being like that. Like I said, I got I got four kids and uh, they're all boys. They all look up to me. And if I'm, you know, dealing with things from what my father did to me, which was which his father did to him and I'm not processing them and I'm not dealing with them the way I should. Um, that's going to negatively impact them. And then that chain is going to continue on. Um, and, uh, I guess my goal is from all of this is to get the closure, deal with the events that I dealt with, and then, um, not make the same mistakes, break that chain. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, I've been a lot of self reflection over the last almost a year. Um, lots of, uh, diving in to try to figure out what I can do to not be who I was all this time. Um, and not only is it for myself because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be like that, but it's also for the people around me. I don't want to, um, you know, have a relationship with somebody and then not treat them the way they should be treated because I'm dealing with mommy issues or daddy issues, uh, to kind of sum it up. Uh, I don't want to uh, be angry because of my father used to kick my ass all the time. When I do remember him, he used to beat the shit out of me. I don't, I don't want to be angry because of that. Um, and I don't want to hold on and harbor those feelings and have them negatively impact my life. So that is the grand scheme of why I went to Vermont and why I decided to finally address these things. And I, and I can say at least if, uh, if you are in a similar situation or you have a similar past and uh, you've been thinking about doing something like that, I encourage you to do it because I feel a lot better. Um, it doesn't, it, it's not like it's a, 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 a medicine that cures everything, right? It's not like I'm going to go and then magically not feel any feelings anymore, but it is a piece to the puzzle, which allows me to, to slowly get better, to slowly come to terms and to slowly accept things and then to, to make better decisions. Um, and, uh, so I encourage you, if you are in a similar situation or you had something like that happen in your life, go ahead and, and do it. Um, yeah, I, it's not going to hurt anything. You might feel a little upset during the process. It might be pretty rough, but, um, facing those things are, are pretty good. And I know I didn't get into great detail on specifics, but I don't think this is probably the video for that. And to be honest with you, I don't really share this kind of stuff with many people. Um, I feel that some, some of you guys who watch the channel and the 750 videos that I got going on here that, you know, everybody has a perception of me and a, and a, and a, you know, that maybe I'm not human. <laughs> I've had some people send me some emails, but I'm as human as everybody listening to the video. We all have problems. We all have things we go through. And, um, I will admit it's, it's difficult to stay on top of the uh, quote unquote YouTube game and to stay on top of business and to stay on top of emails and to stay focused and motivated when you have exterior stresses. And that's another reason why I want to do it. I want to, I want to get through these things so I can truly see success. Now I am very successful in the things I've done thus far, but um, I know there's so much more I can do, but it's just like building a house. You can't, 
you can't start at the second floor if you don't you know you don't build the foundation or you don't build the first floor you can't just magically start there um so that's why i'm going back to help rebuild this foundation and to um just do things better they don't have to be perfect but just better moving in the right direction so yeah that was a one take 14 minutes one take never done that um so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy the video <laughs> that is the reason why i went to vermont hopefully it answers any questions um feel free to share your experience below if you if you so choose you don't really have to um and we can talk about specifics we can talk about afghanistan we can talk about other things later if you guys like these type of videos I am more than happy to share that stuff um, because, it again, it's not for any kind of sympathy. I don't want anybody going, you know, woe is me to me or, you know, trying to give me sympathy or, you know, you know, pat on the back or anything. I don't want any of that stuff. Um, I just know that it's good not to feel alone, right? So if somebody else, is, maybe they're dealing with something similar. And we can, you know, when I get into Afghanistan stuff and the personal things that happen with that and all that kind of stuff, you know, maybe there's somebody out there listening. It's like, shit. Maybe I'm not alone, and then maybe they will make better steps to move forward. So that's kind of where I'm getting at here. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section. I'm going to try to get to the comment section more. I know I've been kind of slacking. I, I apologize. And, uh, yeah, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to uh, hear more, let me know. All right, peace.